Hello, my name's Jim Overton. Today I'm going to do another video on doing inlay work with wood turning using epoxy putty inlay. Uh, I'm going to try and show you how to do a design a bit like this. As I said in my last videos, it's not so much about the wood turning, but I want to show you how to create these designs in the edge of the wood. Um, this is done using Milliput epoxy putty and I inlay it into the wood. I'm going to try and do a design very similar to this with a geometric shape and I'm going to do another little mini change bowl like this with a more random design uh, using an idea that I've got in my head that I've not tried yet and we'll see how it turns out. Could be a bit of fun. Um, the wood I'm going to be using is reclaimed mahogany. Uh, this blank uh, I cut out of an old post I got given. Um, it's exactly the same wood, that's how it turns out, that's the same reclaimed mahogany. Uh, and here's what's left of the post that it came from. Grotty looking old post. Uh, and But the wood is fantastic inside. Um, really, really difficult to work. It's a very old piece of wood. It's very hard, very dense, very brittle. And I've done quite a few bowls out of this post now, and they are really difficult to turn. Um, it chips out, creates horrible dust, very difficult to finish, blunts your tools instantly, constantly resharpening tools, and great big lumps suddenly will just split out for no reason. Uh, because there's probably a few into well internal checks in the wood um i sought some advice off um uh, a professional wood turner i know john davis and I, uh, I think he gave me about the best advice on it um really and he said run the band saw through it and stick it on the firewood pile uh and i think he's probably about right but if you persevere with it if you've got the time to persevere with it you can get some good results um Incidentally, if you're ever over near Stockbridge in Hampshire, pay John Davis Wood Turning a visit. Brilliant in there. Gr loads of tools, loads of blanks, spindle blanks, bowl blanks, and loads of advice and banter. <laughs> so pop in there and see John. He's a good bloke. Um, anyway, I would, another thing I was just going to say, I was setting up for this um, video this morning, and the postman came to the door with a really lovely package from Milliput. They really like my last video, so they've sent me some. So I'm gonna do some more. It's nice, the first thing I've ever been sent free like that, it's really lovely. So uh, I'm um, really grateful to them and I'm really glad they like my video. They said they'd never seen, seen it done before, which was good. I'm glad I've come up with something new. So I will, um, I'll probably do a couple more videos on uh, different aspects of you know what you can do with this um, I've got a few more ideas but uh, anyway I won't um, dwell too much on the actual turning of the wood um, and I won't be showing so much about the mixing of the putty or, or about the characteristics of the putty because I've done all that in my last video uh, which was a two-part video so if you need to um, know a bit more about the putty and how you, you handle it go back to that and have a look um, this is more about how we achieve the effects these are the two uh, bowls I've made from those mahogany blanks and from the old fence post they've been um, done with two coats of sanding sealer they've been sanded right to 1200 and that's the actual final contour that they're going to be or roughly it will be sanded down a fraction more once they're finished but uh, and I'll finish the insides of them with a bit of wax um, I've done two virtually identical uh, I've left them on the chuck because I need to remount these to finish them and I want them to run as true as possible to get the best result possible um, for 
more details have a look at my previous videos but I've created a recess around the rim to put the milliput epoxy putty in uh, I've made it slightly deeper in these this is probably about three three and a half millimeters possibly even four millimeters in places made them slightly deeper because I'm doing something different with it this time and I need a slightly greater depth of putty um, but what I'll do is I shall mix up the putty and uh, show you the next step the first one I'm going to do is the concentric rings of black and white and the first stage is to fill it all with white so I'm going to use the white super fine white milliput and uh, two equal lengths of the putty A and putty B I'm going to mix those thoroughly and put them in all around the recess Okay, I've thoroughly mixed up some white milliput and I'm going to squidge this in all round the rim of this bowl and I want to make sure it goes right into the uh, recess you've created for the putty recess is I've cut it in perpendicular to the surface of the bowl in fact it's slightly undercut so it holds the uh, inlay in um, this stuff sticks really well it probably doesn't need to be undercut but I've undercut it there we are the whites all in there well and truly patted down so that the whole thing's filled I'll make sure there's no low spots or voids and uh, we're going to put this to one side and I will probably do the next stage in the morning once it's completely set. I, I like to leave the stuff overnight really but it's well pretty well set um, in six hours. Okay I've mixed up some black and some white. I'm just using a an old piece of PTFE that I'd left over from another project just to try and roll this out but it sticks even to PTFE. Uh, it's very very sticky. I just want to roll this out roughly it doesn't really have to be that accurate try and get it as smooth as possible got it roughly the same size as this so I'm going to squidge that onto there I'm going to cut this in half put the first half on top of there Some stripes. And I'm just going to chop the uneven edges off. Then going to cut these little blocks into segments that are going to fit into the groove around the bowl. those in a line I 
I'm going to do all of these and lay it all out and then we're going to lay it around the bowl. Right, so I've laid out my segments of putty. We're then going to try and lay those into the groove in the bowl. Make sure they uh, all fit round. So what I'm doing is just squidging all these in. I'm going to squidge all this in. Okay, this is where I'm doing something a bit different to what I did last time. I've put this back on the lathe, I've squidged the putty in, the black and white putty in its stripes, that's all squidged back on, you know, really on there, but I've put it back on the lathe, I'm going to move the tool rest up, now I'm not going to switch the lathe on, but I'm going to put a nice sharp Stanley knife in there, and I'm going to turn the lathe Let's see if I can get a sort of a drag pattern in the putty It forms a kind of chevron, really. Hmm. It's dragging it a bit. I might turn the blade over so it's using the blunt side. I've not tried this before, so might be a load of old rubbish. Well, it's moved it a bit. I'm just going to really press that in now, make sure there's no voids left. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll try it. Not really going to know what it looks like until we cut it back tomorrow. It's all squidged in now. It would be interesting to see how it comes out. The white was slightly stiffer than the black, so by pushing it, I think it's actually squeezed a lot of the black to the surface, so I think it's going to be a lot whiter when I cut it back. Um, it may come out in an interesting pattern. It may be no good, but we'll try it and see what it looks like. Don't switch your lathe on, because the centrifugal force will fling it off. So uh, just do it all by hand, don't switch the lathe on. Okay, it's the next day and I've uh, got the chevron -y patterned black and white miller put back on the lathe, it's rock hard. And I'm going to cut this back, this is the reveal really, you cut it back and see what it looks like. Using a very sharp skew chisel used as a negative rake scraper, I'm going to just take that back and then sand it with a rotary sanding system. Uh, and polish it, take up to 1200. Remounted the stripy one, and uh, or the one that's going to be stripy. So this is the white milliput 
it's rock hard now because it's the next day. I'm going to cut this back the same as I did with the chevron one and I am then going to cut two more grooves in to put the black in so it's a two stage process I'll have to put some black milli put in this and then cut it back again later so I'm going to cut this back to the wood first of all then use a parting tool to put two grooves in incidentally if this had been a light coloured wood I'd have filled it with the black first and then put the white lines in afterwards <laughs> Back indoors now, there's a quick peek at the chevron one, really pleased with that, I'll show you more of that at the end when I've finished the other one. This is going to be the black and white stripe, quite difficult to show you this on the video because of the light, but if I hold it at an angle like that I think you can see I've done the two grooves ready for the black. I used a parting tool and then I used my skew chisel again because using the parting tool raises a slight burr along the edge which I just knocked back. Um, so I'm going to fill that with black. I've mixed up my black milliput putty and I'm going to now squidge that into the uh, grooves that I've made in the white. Now this, I leave these on the chuck and just so they run true when you remount them on the lathe. This is the most important bit really, doing these concentric lines. Uh, this is the, probably the better one to keep it mounted in the chuck. The others you could get away with it, but with this design, if it doesn't run true when you re -put, put it back on the lathe, you will end up with wonky lines, uneven lines. Um, they won't be parallel. I've put the black putty into the grooves. It doesn't matter that it's over the edges at all because it's all going to be cut back tomorrow or later today when it's thoroughly set. Um, just make sure you've squashed it well in with no voids. Quick word on what to do with uh, excess bits of milliput if you've got any left over like this. Um, one thing I did yesterday made a new knife thing from a Stanley knife blade made a little handle for it so I've got another chopper for chopping up the milliput and bits and pieces so um, that's one thing you can do the other thing I do is I uh, roll it up and keep it to use for finials handles or even um, pen blanks uh, just keep keep it let it set because um, it's really hard you can do almost anything with it <laughs> These are the two bowls, finished, same design, which uh, is a design I won't be doing anymore, I'm fed up with this design, it's, um, I've just had a lot of requests off family and friends for these, uh, but it does work well with this milliput. Um, there's the concentric rings, uh, come out really nice, good finish on that. Um, 
you have to keep it really on the chuck or you know really keep it so when you remount it it's running true otherwise you won't get the concentric rings um, nice finish on both of them they've uh, 1200 grit uh, sanding sealer and micro crystalline wax that's how I finished those um, lovely finish on both of them really have come up really nicely and uh, this was an experiment very pleased with how that's come out um, when you're sanding them use a rotary sanding system so that it's going across the pattern so you avoid grooves or wearing different surfaces differentially um, and avoid building up too much heat while you're finishing otherwise you'll start smearing the surface layer uh, but uh, other than that that's it really um, yeah my next project will be a different shaped bowl or something or other um, thanks very much to Mike Walton and Carl Jacobson for your uh, really good feedback I do really appreciate it um, and Carl it is available in the USA Milliput I did check that um, Milliput's website is actually really quite informative as well there's lots of tips and ideas on there but uh, yeah very pleased with those and I'll see you soon for a, another video yeah please like and subscribe uh, that would be great and pass on so other people can have a look uh, that would be great